subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. Phone 8 Plus versus Samsung Galaxy Note 9 full comparison here. Now, I did a speed test about a week ago, and I asked you in that video, would you like to see the full comparison? And many people did comment, yes, they would like to see that. So here we are. The iPhone 8 Plus will be replaced next week by two other larger smartphones. So this one's gonna be the way of the past. But if you have one, you might be thinking about, should I trade it in for a Note 9? Should I sell it, get some money, and just you know put it towards a Note 9? Or should I just wait and see what happens with the 10s Max? Well, if you're trying to come over to Android, this video should help you out. If you want to see the Note 9 versus the 10s Max video, stay tuned. If that's the name they're going to call it, we don't know. But stay tuned to the channel. Be subscribed. We got that one coming soon as well. So let's talk about the key specs that matter. Using the iPhone 8 Plus, you notice you have a 5.5 inch Retina display, has True Tone built in, dual 12 megapixel camera on the rear, Apple A11 Bionic, 3 gigabytes of RAM, in house G. GPU made by Apple, iOS 12 is gonna get on this phone. It has iOS 11 to boot and it has a seven megapixel front facing selfie camera. That's pretty much all you need to know when it comes to the specs. Those specs held up pretty well over the year using it. It's basically an older design with the touch ID on here, like the six plus with the modern iPhone 10 specifications. The Galaxy Note 9, a much more modern 18 by nine style display here. 6.4 inch Super AMOLED display here. The best Samsung has ever created for any of their smartphones. You do have the S Pen on board, Snapdragon 845 for this device, eight gigabytes of RAM, 512 gig, or you can go at 128 gig and six gigs of RAM, Adreno 630 GP. You, this thing is loaded with a dual camera on the rear, variable aperture for changing apertures at nighttime automatically on the front eight megapixel camera. So it basically one ups the iPhone A plus in the spec department in every department. So the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 definitely easily has the iPhone 8 plus beat if we wanna do paper spec versus paper spec. Okay, so let's talk about the bodies, the design, the build quality. First of all, both of these are over 200 grams. So those people out there who like big phones that are weighty, and they associate weight with quality. They both basically offer that. However, the iPhone 8 Plus was a massive phone, but for some reason, Note 9 definitely makes it feel small. So phones are just getting bigger and bigger, it seems like, and the Note 9 feels like a monster next to the iPhone 8 Plus. The design is pretty thin here on the device, actually very thin for its size. Um, it also has a camera bump on the rear, and it looks basically like a 7 Plus with glass on the rear touch ID home button. There's not much to speak of in the way of design. It's a pretty good build quality. Drop it on the back though, that glass is definitely cracking for this device. Let's take a look at the Galaxy Note 9. Basically again, like the Note 8, but a little bit more refined, shorter, a little bit wider, and it feels kind of more like what Note should feel like, like a little bit wider, which I do like. But the fingerprint location has been moved. We do have a flat, you know, camera bump, and it's pretty thick phone. It's not super thin. If you put it in a rugged case like this one, link down below, it definitely gets really thick here for the Galaxy Note 9. So this can get bulky real quick. So can the 8 Plus if you throw an outer box on that device. But overall, I would say that the Galaxy Note 9 with the chamfered edges, its curved display, might be definitely the better looking design, at least in my opinion, over the iPhone 8 Plus. Now, in terms of their build quality, both of these scare me to not have a case in them because they will crack, they will scratch. So put screen protectors and cases on these premium smartphones. They're both pretty much the same in that regard. I do like the flatter camera profile of the Note 9 versus that bump on the iPhone 8 Plus. Let me know your thoughts on design between these two down below. These thick bezels are the way of the past. So, you know, that's one thing you gotta deal with if you're gonna get an iPhone 8 Plus. Okay, so I wanna talk about display quality. The iPhone 8 Plus, actually, even though it's an LCD panel, it's very well calibrated, true tone, adjusts very properly in different lighting conditions to make it very easy to read. So. I really love the iPhone 8 Plus for reading. This phone is fantastic for basically reading anything on display. Let's go to the Apple News application and uh, let's get away from Trump. We don't wanna read about him today. Let me go to following here. I'll go to one of my channels. I'm just following a bunch of tech sources. Let's go to a common one like PC World, for example, and just take a look at one of these articles and just see what I'm saying. So, you know, you have no notch cutting into your content and very sharp, even at this size, 5.5 inches, you don't need 2K. This is 
really a pretty sharp display. And uh, because there's no curved edges, it's just a really flat, easy, wide 16 by nine, the way things were meant to be on a display. It's just a really nice reading experience. But when it comes to viewing angles, they're a little washed out in comparison to the AMOLED display for the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. And uh, video watching is actually really nice on the 8 Plus because you get the full 16 by nine. So I would say even though LCD is on the iPhone 8 Plus, it's a really enjoyable display. Now, the Galaxy Note 9, though is just kind of a mind-blowing display when you take a look at this thing it just pops no matter what you're doing you know you definitely are like really impressed always by the display samsung always knocks this one out of the park and the note 9 is no exception however i do think that you know because it's not 16 by 9 some videos you have to pinch that gets annoying i don't care i like the old way where you can just you know having 16 by 9 no pinching to watch videos that gets annoying on any 18 by 9 display but this thing is very vibrant very sharp and probably the best display on the market so i think the note 9 definitely wins easily in the display category over the 8 plus but the 8 plus's display is still definitely a very good one and i don't think most people are gonna have a problem with it if they can look past the bezels that kind of you know are just kind of thick on that panel okay so let's talk software this one is an easy one everybody has their preference by now pretty much of which software they're going to use and then there's the open-minded people that are going to be using both of these but you know the ios experience for apple is going to keep you updated for a very long time and very fast and it's a very you know fluid smooth operating system with not too much customization but really works well has a really strong security uh because you know it's being controlled all by the company and they're really constantly pushing out those software updates however to some it can get boring because there's no customization and uh, it's just the same thing you're looking at every single day now on a note 9 samsung has done something here that i've never seen them do before and that is make this phone not have any twitching not any lagging the note 9 is the best performing samsung phone ever and this thing is very fast and uh, while it's not like the iphone a touch latency is a little bit different the way the animations look it's not going to feel the same as an iphone it feels like the fastest galaxy ever and i'm not saying the iphone feels better i'm just saying they feel different but this one definitely doesn't lag at all no matter what you throw at it so the samsung galaxy note 9 is definitely up there when it comes to speed this device is also a multitasking beast we don't need to go into this too much i covered this in the full review and essentially you're not going to get updates quite as quick i mean it's a thousand dollar phone and didn't even launch with the latest version of android and android 9 pi so software it comes down to user preference if you want mobile operating system first stay on your 8 plus you want updates stay on your 8 plus or you know buy an 8 plus if you were trying to decide between these two if you want customization you want you know to feel like you have a little computer in your pocket the note 9 will blow the iphone 8 plus to smithereens so let's get on to performance the iphone 8 plus butter a11 bionic chip three gigs of ram butter you know what i mean buttery smooth this thing just never lags some people get annoyed by that term buttery smooth what does that even mean it means this thing is as smooth as butter slipping off a table you ever seen butter on a plate or whatever it's just slick and smooth that's what the iphone 8 plus is this thing never lags up and uh i don't care how old this is or how old it gets i see this phone lasting very long when it comes to the performance now animations are going to get faster for ios 12 over this ios 11 but Ever since I bought this phone, never once shut off on me, never once restarted, never once lagged, no hiccups, nothing. I mean, perfect performance, never seen a problem with this. You know, some applications are faster on Android, some Google applications like Google Keep, for example. But in terms of just its raw performance, like I said, butter. Now over here on the Galaxy Note 9, this thing is also butter this thing is smooth and uh slick i haven't had any issues so far you know a lot of the you know trolls are gonna say oh just wait oh you just wait buddy wait till one year and that thing's slow nah i don't think so the note 8 is still just fine so i don't have any issues i don't see any issues coming with the note 9 so for galaxy land this thing is super smooth as well so i think in the performance department you know, you're not, if you go from an 8 Plus to a Note 9, you're not really changing, you're not really upgrading big time, even though the specs would say that, it doesn't feel like a huge upgrade in performance. All right, so I wanna talk about storage and biometrics. So biometric security, we have Touch ID here, very fast, very efficient for the iPhone 8 Plus. I don't think a lot of people have an issue with Touch ID. As a matter of fact, most people are a little bit upset that Apple's going away 
completely from Touch ID. So that's not a problem. Storage capacity goes up to 256 gig on the iPhone 8 Plus, but that brings it up almost to $1,000, which I don't think is really worth it for an 8 Plus. But, you know, you got that option. Over here, you can go up to 512 gigs. So the Note 9 wins in the storage department over this device in terms of the max capacity you can get. But they also have that sweet spot 128 gigabyte, which the iPhone 8 Plus doesn't have. However, you're going to pay more for that on the Note 9 at $1,000. Now, the Note 9's biometric security does have a faster fingerprint than the iPhone 8 Plus. Whether you like its location, that's a personal preference thing. But you do have face unlock. You do have iris scanning so the note 9 wins in both storage and biometric security options so quickly discussing audio the iphone 8 plus stereo sound one at the bottom one at the top plenty loud for this device plenty full for this device you're going to have no issues when you are listening to any type of youtube videos or music on this device they're going to be pretty loud so the iphone 8 plus doesn't mess around when it comes to its audio quality now that also plays Okay, quiet down. That also plays effect when you are listening to speakerphone calls when you're making calls. So that's fine. No headphone jack though here for this phone, so dongle life remains. On the Note 9, you have a headphone jack. You also have finally stereo speakers to a Note device, one at the top, one at the bottom, and you do have Dolby Atmos control for customizing that sound on the phone right here, Dolby Atmos. So this one gets plenty loud as well. No more distorting it by covering up the speaker here. So the Note 9 definitely is on par now, at least with this iPhone when it comes to that. They're pretty similar. You know, I would say that the Note 9 sounds a little bit louder when you do place it on a table. But other than that, I think you're going to be happy either way when it comes to audio quality. But do keep in mind, if you need that headphone jack, the Note 9 gets an extra point here. I want to mention call quality because I noticed a key difference between both of these. The iPhone 8 Plus has a clearer call quality in my experience for some reason it just sounds more clear to the ear like a little bit more hd but the note 9 gets louder it has an extra volume mode when you are placing a call so it's a louder phone call through the earpiece so it's also very clear as well i think the note 9 and the iphone 8 plus both have excellent call quality excellent reception on both of them and i'm very happy with this aspect of both of these devices and they both have very loud speakers for again, them speakerphone conference calls or just when you got when you just need to make that speakerphone call, place it on a table, boosting sound here for both of these. So very good in this department. Strong. All right. So I want to talk about gaming and I downloaded this easier light game that pretty much any phone can run. But just for the purposes of video, we can talk about it here. So I have done the more graphically intensive games like Dead Trigger, for example, Modern Combat 5. These devices have some key differences. So the iPhone 8 Plus still has the lead in performance optimization of these games, updates, and I think some of them even look better for the iPhone still. So in that regard, you might still want the iPhone series. But over here for the Note 9, you do have a more vibrant display. You can go full screen. I don't have this one on full screen at the moment, but I can change that if I would like. If you leave it in this mode, you kind of have bezels to hold on here too as well. But you can run it full screen if you would like. I'd say overall, you're faced with a dilemma. You got a high storage capacity for tons of games here. The iPhone 8 Plus is going to give you more optimized games come first to this phone as well. I personally would choose the iPhone for gaming, even though the Note 9 has the water carbon cooling system, it has tons of storage. I still think it's just better suited for productivity tasks versus gaming, whereas the iPhone has, you know, game developers just bring in the games first to this platform. So iOS to me is still the way to go for this department. All right, so we're moving on to camera here. The iPhone 8 Plus has a pretty fantastic camera. It has 4K 60 video recording, unlimited. You don't really get cut off when you are doing that video and it just takes excellent photos but the note 9 with its dual 12 megapixel camera also has one of the best in the business the variable aperture and i find detail to be stronger for the note 9 however some people like that more yellowish tone photo on the iphone that looks a little bit more like i would say canon photos i think the note 9 looks a little bit more like a panasonic kind of photo in my personal experience with both those cameras the note 9 does display a little bit more detail but i want to showcase to you some of the samples i took and you could decide for yourself which one you think 
is better but i would just say that if you're gonna buy one of these in terms of the camera you want the iphone if you want better instagram social media photos because they just work better they don't compress you want the note 9 if you want to tweak your photos you want to do manual you want to have all the features in the kitchen sink for the note 9 that's the phone you want right here you want to do expandable storage the note 9 is the winner but take a look at these samples and decide for yourself which one you think is a little bit better Okay, so battery life. The iPhone 8 Plus is blowing away the Note 9 in one area in battery, and the Note 9 is kind of beating the iPhone 8 Plus in another area. Here we go. The iPhone 8 Plus is blowing away the Note 9 in standby. The Note 9 is blowing away the iPhone 8 Plus in heavy use throughout the day. So, you know, it depends. If it's in your pocket, what's really annoying about the Note 9 is that it drains even when it's in your pocket. Like it has bad standby time. It has great usage time and you will get through a full day easily, maybe even one and a half on a Note 9. But it's just a little disappointing that you could leave the iPhone 8 Plus in your pocket and if you don't use it, you're barely gonna lose any percentage. But with the Note 9, you do. However, when you are actually using these phones rather consistently, the Note 9 can just seem to go a little bit further. There's something else I noticed about the battery. From 100 to 90, the iPhone 8 Plus just takes forever to drain. Once you get under 90, you start seeing the real drain happen for the 8 Plus. The Galaxy Note 9, on the other hand, from 100 to 90, it could be a little bit disappointing because you're like, what, just 50 minutes and my battery drained 10%? It'll go down to 90 rather quickly. Under 90, it starts really creeping down and going really slow from like 90 to zero. That's when the Note 9 really shows its power. So in terms of battery life, I don't think I would choose either, you know, just based on battery life. They both have very strong battery life. But if you want the ultimate size and technical specification and you actually use your phone heavily throughout the day, I think the Note 9 is still slightly better. But if you find yourself putting it in your pocket, using it here and there, you're going to really love the standby time of the iPhone 8 Plus. Okay, guys, so I've arrived at the final conclusion here. We covered everything between these phones. And basically, I didn't talk about the S Pen because there's no comparison. And the S Pen, if you want one, you want you want to do all this artistic stuff, you want to be productive, you want to jot down notes, the S Pen is an absolute winner here for the Note 9 Bluetooth remote in there, and you can take photos, swipe through music. It's a beast when it comes to that regard if you use it. If you don't use it, then that doesn't really matter. Pricing, the Note 9, over $1,000, but let's not think about just that. The Note 9 is already dropping on the used market. You can find them at under 1000 already, and the prices of Galaxy's value does diminish quicker than an iPhone, so I would say that, you know, if you can buy an iPhone 8 Plus, the chances are you could probably afford a Note 9 as well. They're both premium-priced devices. Okay, so my final conclusion is this. We already know that platforms are very personal. People have their own preferences, whether they want to be on Android, Samsung experiences, or they want to be on the iOS experience. That's very personal. That I'm not going to try to change. I'm not even going to try to change your mind there. But from a hardware technology innovative standpoint, the Note 9 is definitely ahead of the iPhone 8 Plus. If you're willing to try both platforms and you wanted to upgrade to the Note 9, I think you're going to be happy with the upgrade but if you're like i don't know should i really wait should i wait for the 10s max then that just tells me right there that you really still love ios and i definitely think you should wait till you see my iphone 10s max versus the galaxy note 9 and that is a rumored name it might not be that by the time you watch that video they might call it the 10 plus 10s plus who knows what they're going to call it? And that's my conclusion. If you want to see separated reviews, I'll leave the links down below, like individual ones. If you're just trying to buy an 8 Plus, you don't care about the Note 9, or you're trying to buy the Note 9, you don't care about the 8 Plus, check the links down below. And consider this question. Which phone would you choose? I'd like to know what you guys think. Like, which one would you actually pick here? Would you just wait for the 10s Max or whatever it's going to be called and just trade in this? Or are you already planning on trading your 8 Plus? For the Galaxy Note 9, are you planning on buying an 8 Plus? You're planning on buying a Note 9. Let us know your experiences.